And thank you judges for your questions. We'll now move to our presentation by Team At Your Cervix from Rice University. Hi, we're Team At Your Cervix. I'm Lisa, this is Lauren, and we're a global health and bio e senior design team focused on treating late stage cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a poor woman's disease. In low resource setting, cervical cancer is the number one cause of death from cancer in women. 80% of cases are diagnosed in these low resource settings, and since many of these women do not have the opportunity to be screened and treated early on, most cases have progressed to later stages. Unfortunately, late stage cervical cancer has just a 5% survival rate, contributing to the over 200,000 deaths each year from cervical cancer in low resource settings alone. Brachytherapy is an aggressive form of radiotherapy. It is the only curative treatment for late stage cervical cancer. It involves placing high dose radiation seeds right into the tumor, entirely eliminating the cancer cells. Current treatment heavily relies on the use of transcutaneous needles. These are needles that are pushed through healthy tissue to reach complex tumors and are guided only by ultrasound. The needles pass near vital organs and structures and can easily puncture these structures if placed incorrectly. Overall, the current procedure is highly invasive, time intensive, and requires a high level of expertise to perform. In some low resource settings, brachytherapy equipment is available, but the complicated nature of this procedure hinders any actual use of the treatment. Our solution is a universally friendly obturator, the UFO, which is a brachytherapy applicator with a wide slotted obturator. The UFO addresses the current issues with brachytherapy by eliminating the need for transcutaneous needles and by channeling all the needles to the vaginal canal. The UFO is a 3D printed device with two sections, a top section with an internal template and a bottom section composed of an obturator. The top section has slanted holes for additional needles to reach the outermost regions of laterally extended tumors. It is easy to place and use as needles are completely stable within the device. It is adaptable to varying anatomy because the obturator will come in two sizes compatible with the current standard, 13 centimeters and 15 centimeters. The diameter of the central hole through both pieces will also be adjustable for patients with or without hysterectomy. It is visible on CT, which is necessary for needle placement and radiation dose distribution plans. It allows for targeted and uniform radiation distribution, which is necessary for patient safety and for the effectiveness of the treatment. And finally, it reduces the injury to the patient by removing the use of transcutaneous needles. We are working with Dr. Alexander Hanania and Dr. Michelle Ludwig, uh, who are radiation oncologists at the Harris County Health Center and currently perform regularly these cervical brachytherapy procedures. Through numerous cycles of consulting and testing with them and our team, we have developed a prototype that is um, effective and fits into the environment of an operating room and also meets the gaps of current devices in this procedure on the market. Uh, through usability testing that mimics the procedure in the cervix and vaginal canal, uh, we found that the arrangement of the needles using our device matches that of the current procedure. And as you can see with this, if this is the tumor um, and this is our device inserted, we reach these tumors through um, a laterally extended angle uh, rather than through going through healthy tissue. Um, we also found that we can treat a nine centimeter tumor effectively, uh, which is appropriate for the majority of cervical cancer patients um, and their tumor sizes. Um, additionally, through our testing, we found that our device reduces the probability of puncturing the bladder and rectum, which are severe complications that often occur in the current procedure. Um, and we were also able to place radiation seeds and cold spots that are currently present uh, due to the current equipment and the device and the way it works. Um, as Elisa uh, mentioned, we reduce the uh, expertise required for this procedure because these needles are guided um, to the tumor. Um, and this allows us to decrease the time required to accomplish this procedure. Uh, it currently takes two to two and a half hours. And through using our device, our doctors predict that uh, the procedure would take one to one and a half hours using our device, which is a significant reduction in time, which is very important for the hospital, the patient, and the doctors performing these procedures so that we can treat more patients. Um, we've created an effective device that is 3D printed it is biocompatible and printed in nylon 12, which is currently used in many medical devices. And it's also only $55 with the current way it is printed, um, which is very cost effective and important for the implementation of our device in a low resource setting. Uh, additionally, it's sterilizable and autoclavable so that it can be um, reused many times uh, for numerous patients. And it's also compatible with the current equipment, uh, which is the radiation sources and the scans and the needles uh, from many different companies um, and different clinics. 
This year, we have developed a prototype to treat these late stage cervical cancer tumors, and we're very excited about the progress we've made and how far we've come with our device, and we're very excited to see where it'll come in the future and the patients and who we will be able to affect with our device. Thank you for listening. Um, we're so excited to get to show you what we've been working on. Thank you so much. We will now uh, open up for questions again for at your cervix. Um, we had one question come in on the chat for the team from Yusuf. How does the doctor control the depth of the needle? Someone from the team address that? Yeah, so I'm Susanna. Thank you all so much for um, being interested in our project and uh, supporting us as we try to address cervical cancer issues. Um, so with the current procedures, doctors have to guide needles using ultrasound. Um, and as our team mentioned in the video, the, they are guiding these needles transcutaneously, which means they're going through skin and many layers of tissue before they reach the cervix um, where the tumor is. And so with our device, um, the doctors will still use ultrasound, but as the needles are traveling through our device all the way to the cervix, that that whole section won't need guiding because the needles are already going through channels in the device that are that control where they are directed. And so only the last segment when they actually reach the tumor is when the doctors will have to control using ultrasound. Thank you. I see Delphine has a question. Delphine, could you unmute? Um, great presentation. Uh, similarly, I had kind of two questions. The, does your device then still require some amount of image guidance or are you proposing it uh, to not need the image guidance? And kind of similarly, why is the current method, why do they come in from, from the skin and don't come in from the vaginal canal normally? Do you know? Yeah, um, so very relatedly, um, so the, with the current method, um, they will, they, they use a, an external template that you saw um, held up in the video. It was the blue template with the white stick in it. Um, and that gets sutured to the outside of the patient's body and serves as a grid to guide the needles. But the around the cervix is a pretty densely, um, is a pretty dense area with a lot of different structures. So there's arteries and nerves and the bladder and the rectum and other, other tissue that um, the doctors have to navigate around. Um, and so what they current, but the current template that they use has been used since the 60s. And it's considered the standard of care um, and they don't, there hasn't been significant progress in moving away from transcutaneous needles, even in newer devices that are coming out. Um, so that's something that's really unique to our device. Um, and we do, to get to the other part of your question, we do expect that there will be some level of imaging that's required uh, with our device. We just believe that um, because we're guiding the needles for so much of their path through the body, they that that level of expertise in imaging will re be reduced. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we have time, I think, for one more question um, from Jay on the group chat. Uh, do you know what testing you have to do to certify it for radiation compatibility? I'll take this one. Um, so actually, since our device um, is just the applicator, we're not um, changing the needles that are used to administer the radiation at all. Um, and so the certifications necessary for radiation apply only to the needles and not for the applicator through which the needles travel through. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that concludes our question for Team At Your Cervix. Thank you so much, team, for your um, fantastic presentation.